The Z1 Analyzer. It is a fantastic telemetry tool for making you a faster driver. And here it is with a lap of data loaded. I can look at various traces or the analysis screens and find out where I can gain time. So how do you go from driving around in your favorite sim to viewing that data in the analyzer? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. And note that the analyzer can also import external data from real-world cars, allowing you to view and compare that data to other laps, simulated or real. While that's a video for another time, in this one, we are going to talk about sim laps only. With the Z1 software, the ability to view telemetry in the analyzer starts with data logging. And that is in the Z1 dashboard or the Z1 server. So here I am in the Z1 dashboard, and I have the settings uh, dialog open. I'm in the general tab. And the two things to look at here are the data logging right here um, and where you're actually going to be saving your files to. So right now, you have three choices with data logging. You can have it always on, you can have it turn on when you click a button, or you can have it never on. Obviously, if you choose never, uh, you're not going to get any data, and there'll be nothing to analyze. So for this video, we're going to look at the always or the button option. So always uh, is a good one to use if you just want to sort of set and forget. This will log all your data when you're on track. Um, the location of the files is specified right here. So the save ZOD files and where you're going to save it to. By default, it goes into the Z1 dashboard folder in your documents. Now uh, you can change this if you want to save it to a different drive or a different directory by clicking the browse button. Uh, note that if you're using iRacing, we actually don't create our own telemetry files for iRacing because their files contain much more data than the sim actually outputs in real time. So those files are saved by uh, default by iRacing. And so let's say uh, you want to choose the button option for data log. In that case, now you need to go to the button section, and you need to assign a button to data log. That's right here under data log. If you click this, you can now choose a button that you want to assign. This button acts as a toggle switch. So when you're driving along, if you want to start recording, you click the button you assigned. It will record until you click that button again. Uh, and this is if you want to just do one lap without having to record everything you're doing uh, all the time. So for the purposes of this video, we are going to go back to always. When you have the selections made, just click OK, and you're good to go. Here we are in a car in uh, our sim, and you'll always know if the Z1 software is logging data, because in the bottom right here, you'll have this small DL icon. Whenever you see that, you know data logging is on, and you are good to go. One thing to note about how laps are recorded uh, in data logging is you must drive a full lap. You have to cross the start-finish line, drive a full lap, cross the start-finish line again, and then that lap will be recorded. If you do just a partial lap, or just an in-lap or an out-lap, that lap is not going to get recorded. Here we are in the Z1 analyzer. We've driven our laps in our sim, we've recorded that data, and now we want to open that in the analyzer and view the traces or view the analysis screens and find out what we can do to go faster around that lap. So, Right now, I'm in the Settings screen in the General tab. And we need to make sure that a couple of things are set so that we can find the laps and open them. The first are the telemetry folders. These should match what we've specified in the Z1 dashboard. And uh, by default, they should. Um, but if you're doing this over a network, or maybe you're using different drives, you need to make sure that these match. If they don't match, the analyzer won't be able to find any of your laps. Okay, the next uh, setting to look at is this max lap age right here. So you want to set this to an appropriate length that your laps that you recorded will be included when you look for them. Um, if you've just driven them, then any one of these options will be fine. But as you have more and more laps, you might not want all the laps to be included. 
So make sure that your maximum lap age is something which is appropriate for your uh, needs when you're driving your laps. ZOD start and ZOD end percentages. These two values right here. These specify how far around the beginning of the lap and the end of the lap you have to be in order for the lap to be uh, read in the analyzer. So for the start percentage, right now at 5%, that means you can start no more than 5% of the way around the lap for the lap to be included. And for the end one at 94%, it means that you have to do at least 94% of the lap for it to be included. So there are two reasons to have these percentages. Uh, at some tracks, the Nürburgring in particular, you don't actually finish the lap when you're doing a timed lap. So at the uh, Nordschleifer Torschwagen, you only do about 94 or 5% of the lap, and then you're underneath the um, gantry and the rest of the lap doesn't count. So you want to make sure those laps are included. Uh, the other uh, reason you might want to change these is that some sims, such as R-Factor, when they report the position on track, they only do it every couple of seconds. And so your percentage at the start might skip. It might not start at zero. It might start at two or three. Uh, and we have to do some interpolation. So you don't want to have these start and ends be at zero and 99, because you'll probably miss a lot of laps. So leaving them at the 5% and the 94% is the best option. And hopefully this uh, made that clear and not more confusing. OK, so with all our settings set, click OK and exit that dialog. So the next thing to do is to do a lap scan. Now, you might have done this when you initially started the program. But if not, you can manually start one by the file menu and then choosing Scan Laps. That brings up the lap scan dialog. And the analyzer will then go through all your sims and look for any files that it can import for you to display. Uh, when the scan is finished, you get an option to open a lap right now, either yes or no. And um, we're going to choose no for the moment, because then we can look at this and show you what everything uh, means in this dialog. So you have your filters up here of the age of the lap and the start and complete distances. And then you have a display of each sim, where it was looking for the telemetry files, how many files it found, and how many laps were recorded, and how many were skipped. So this information can be useful if you're looking for laps and for some reason they're not coming up. You can see here to see what the analyzer actually did, um, and what it found, and what it skipped, and what filters it was using. So now my lap scan is complete. I'm going to go to File and Open Lap. Now note that I don't have to scan for laps every single time I open the analyzer. I would only need to do that if I've added some new laps uh, in my sim and I want to import them to the analyzer. So we come to here the um, Select Lap dialog. And um, my sim here is uh, I'm going to choose iRacing because that's where I was driving my lap. And I'm going to select my track. And it was at Lime Rock. So that's right here, this one. And right now, it's telling me that there were 281 laps found on the server for this track, which means I can download any of these laps from other drivers and view them, compare them to my lap. Um, but right now, I'm not interested in that. I just want to see laps that I have driven. So there are options to filter this down. So I'm going to right click. And I'm going to choose Show Drivers. And I'm just going to go find my name in this list of drivers here. And then I'm going to select myself. And that has the advantage of deselecting everybody else. So right now, I only see my laps. So the laps that are in blue here, um, those are the ones which are on the server. Uh, the ones that are in black are local to your machine. Um, if you want to see just the laps that are on your machine, you can choose local apps. And if you want to see just the ones that are on the server, you can choose server apps. For now, I'm going to leave this alone and look at both of them. Uh, the reason that some of my laps are on the server is because I have the share laps option selected. So whenever I open a lap, that lap gets shared to the server so others can view that lap as well. 
It also allows me to view other people's labs. So um, if you don't share your labs, that's fine, but you can't view other people's labs. So now uh, I want to open one of my labs. Uh, if I want to use this one right here, this 52.04, I can double click to open it, or I can right click and choose if I want to open it as a main lab, a base lab, or a left or right edge. Um, the left or right edges uh, is a whole other discussion for another video, but that's about how you do defining the left side of the track and the right side of the track. So right now I'm just going to open it as a main lab. And here we have the uh, line rock lap open and displayed in the analyzer. And now I'm good to go. I can look at the traces. I can look at the analysis screens. So hopefully this has been a useful video in explaining how you get from driving in the sim to viewing your labs in the analyzer using the Z1 software. Please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and if you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below.